Yeah, I'm Jake Sadovich, and uh, this is my 34-foot Dauntless Patrol boat. There was a, the original one was a commission build for a friend of mine, Eddie Garrett, hit me up on Messenger to build it. They had a retiring Commodore that was in charge of all the units that runs this boat, so it was built. So this is a recreation of the one that I built for that. Um, now what is the, the real life uh, boat that this is based on? Uh, what is that typically used for? Are these still in use today? Uh, yeah, they are. They're, um, they're uh, expeditionary uh, security forces, and these particular ones are specifically tasked with going out ahead of nuclear assets like nuclear carriers or a destroyer or anything like that. So take us through some of the different sections of the boat here and kind of what, how you were able to represent this with Lego. Oh, uh, okay. Um, so on the backs, one of my favorite details is the kind of, it's like a shade rack, so a lot of times that will have a cloth over it. So I was able to do that with a, a lot of the clip joints and the three millimeter tube. And then it's got 250 caliber machine guns, port and starboard, and then fore and aft are uh, M240s. So that was kind of fun trying to brick build those. And I had some fun elements I was able to include, like the stock on the 240 is a carrot top in black, and the front of the barrel on that is a Harry Potter wand. You gotta get creative with that parts usage there. Oh yeah, for <laughs> sure. And so the and then I've got the Xbox controller for the handles on the 50 cals. And then another one of my favorite ones was the sausages used on the on those uh, on these rails here on the side to get those angles just right. So lots of lots of great details and parts usages in there. What's the interior section here like? Um, it's a four seat cabin. Um, I can take the top off yeah, if you great. let. I'll pop that off. <clears throat> so on the interior, on the I haven't replaced it quite yet, but there's a computer screen on the port side there. So when I was building the original one, I had a specific computer, two by two computer screen that I was looking for and I couldn't find it. And I was about three o'clock in the morning of an all-nighter trying to get it done before my flight the next day to deliver it. I came across the Defender video game one. So I put that and a video game controller there, quote unquote, temporarily. <laughs> And I never got back to it because it was an all-nighter and I forgot about it. So when I presented it, that was still there, so that's what he has. Um, so for this one, I haven't got back and put the proper one in. But So yeah, it's a 4C, and then that's about it. Actually, the interior was a little bit difficult because when I was asking for reference photos and looking for them, I only found maybe three pictures online, and they weren't great. So when I asked my buddy if I could get pictures of it, it was a solid no, because it's a Navy vehicle. <laughs> there was no pictures of that. So I was able to extrapolate it from some outside pictures where you could see a little bit inside and the few I could find. So there's some stuff that's a little off in there, but it's pretty, pretty accurate inside. So, so then you mostly just use kind of publicly available photos of the outside then for the build? Yeah, for sure. And then he was able to get me some exterior photos of specific things and I found one thread of someone who had taken a bunch of pictures at an air show so I was able to get a lot of the like the rear the jet nozzle for the engine I was able to get some good good views of that how did you achieve the the bottom side of the ship here and even this very nice rounded technique at the front okay um the rounded technique from a fr the front I stole from my friend Matt um Lincoln in Boise he had done somewhere he had it's a three millimeter tube around here with the rest of these clipped on he had done something similar and I wanted to try it. So when I first put that on, it looked really good, but it sagged really bad. So in his, the parts came up over the here and connected and that held it in place. So I had to go back in and make some clips at different elevations around the front to hold that in place. And that worked out. And then most of the rear of the hull was fairly straightforward. There, there's more options as far as slopes on your standard up and down slope than an inverted slope. So I made it using the standard one so the entire hull is inverted. 
because I could have more parts options there. And I got to the front, <clears throat> excuse me. So I got to the front, this about from here forward on the hole, and again, middle of an all-nighter, I'm trying to get that done and I could not figure it out. Um, so at that point I was about ready to uh, throw all the parts in my bag to get on the flight and hopefully finish it in San Diego the day before this change of command ceremony. Um, so the rest of that story is I missed my flight anyways. <laughs> so I missed the whole deal. And I had to call my friend Matt and he helped me design that front chunk. It was so difficult. So he, he did some crazy stuff in the main core and then I fleshed out the rest of it. So it ended up being about another month until I was able to deliver it to San Diego, in which time I was able to add more details. So I was in the end glad because I wasn't like uh, windshield wipers, for example, example, was one part that probably wouldn't have been on there. But I was able to take a little extra time and figure that out. Oh, that and that is that's where the other Harry Potter ones are. <laughs> so, so it worked out well in the end. You added some extra detail. Yeah, I think the model itself is much better for it. The boxes in the back are a stud wider and about a brick taller, and they're much more detailed and look better in the end. So, yeah, it all worked out. One thing that's great about the presentation of this model is also kind of the brown wooden looking stand that you made and it's so smooth and nice looking that it really helps with the overall presentation. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that was, it's actually redesigned now because in the original one it had like clear Technic beams holding it up and that was built in, in as part of the boat because I was under a little time pressure. So for this version I was able to go back and redesign that and make it look like more like a wooden support and everything. It's the same basic design with basically like a skin around as far as the stands. The, ba the base of it is the same. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that came out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. And we should mention also your best military award here at Brick Slopes this year. So congratulations on that as well. Uh, certainly well deserved there. Well, I also want to mention this other build you've got over here. Your, your uh, beautifully che done chibi style A10 build. <laughs> Since we're here, why don't you go ahead and talk about that build as well? Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I'm super happy with that one. The A-10 has is been my favorite airplane since I was probably six. Um, and I've always wanted to build one in LEGO, and I've seen some really good ones. And so it kind of looked a little bit difficult, but I saw the, it was the window piece. I was looking around in Bricks and Minifigs and found it and saw it, thought it kind of looked like a cartoony version of it if you put it backwards. So I decided to go ahead and try to do a cartoony version of it. Um, and then near the end, I went back and redesigned the front a little so that I could brick build in the shark mouth, the wild weasel motif. So I was pretty happy with how that came out, too. Yeah, the great thing is, even with this style that you've chosen, it's instantly recognizable. It's such an iconic plane. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely recognizable. Um, Lot, yeah, lots of, you even got like the, the main gun in, in the center there and then even some uh, weapons underneath the wings as well. Yeah, yeah, I was able to do the two, um, oh yeah, those are bombs, not fuel tanks. <laughs> so it's got the two huge bombs, and then it's got the Maverick missiles. Uh, it's got, I built two different submodels for the wheels, so I can have that wheels up or wheels down. And then, oh, I was able to use uh, some records for the rear wheels, so it kind of gives the wheel itself even a cartoony look, or the tire, rather. And then I was able to get the gun slightly off-center and the front, wheel slightly off center to compensate for that so I was pretty happy with some of the details I was able to pack in at that size and and then the shape of it it's kind of difficult for me to do a cartoony vehicle because sometimes it looks too dumb <laughs> it's it's hard to get that balance where I want it to be accurate and look like the thing but cartoony and like where does that so I'm, ha I'm happy with the balance I was able to get with it Great work there, and before we end, I also want to mention, related to the Dauntless, you actually have a challenge coin you got here as well, right? Uh, yes, so the outgoing Commodore, who this model was commissioned for as a retiring gift, gave me his personal challenge coin. So, as a civilian, getting a challenge coin from a military member was like a huge honor for me. It was so cool. So, it's one of those things in kind of the mythos of military where it's this big thing, or like, this huge cool thing that I would never, I've never been in the military, so it's something that I would never have expected to get. So to have him just handshake hand it to me was like the coolest thing in the world. That's awesome, yeah, such a great honor. Great builds here, thank you so much, Jake, always appreciate it.